I'm Katrine Brett. I transferred from missing persons. Harry Hall. I know who you are. You're up there with the legends. When I read the script, I really liked it. Started to introduce myself to the books and to Yo Nesbo's Harry Hole and the world that he sort of occupies. And I've, I've loved them. I can't keep covering for you. You mentioned the name Nesbo I'm around Oslo, and, and uh, you know, he's a fixture here. Harry Hole came to me um, uh, in 1997 on a, on a plane from Oslo to, uh, to Sydney. This really tall, typically Scandinavian guy didn't speak much, he was a loner, and he had this uh, blue, blue eyes. That was like my first visual image of him. When I was a kid, me and my brother, we used to go to my, my grandmother for holidays. She would always say that if you're not home and in bed by eight o'clock, then Harry Hule will come get you. Hule was the, the local police officer, and I, I never saw him. But I always imagined this big, scary guy that was coming to get us. So it was a combination of that, and also there was a Harry was the name of uh, our local soccer hero in the town where I grew up, and um, so I combined uh, their names. It's an iconic character, a, a male detective. One can quite easily fall into cliché because you've got a standard character who's a policeman solving a crime. What we've tried to do is make the Harry Hole in our film, as he is in the book, unpredictable. That is what, to me, makes him interesting as a character, is that you have all these contradictions. He cares for those who are close to him, but he doesn't want anyone to be close to him. His experience in life is that those people that he has loved, they will be taken away from him. The Snowman was our seventh book in the series. It has um, a horror element that previous books probably didn't have. It's a best-selling serial killer thriller, and Thomas Alfredson is an incredibly original director, which means that you can turn it into something unexpected. All those qualities made it feel like a really good fit. I was very happy when I understood that the way the producers saw this movie was the same way that I saw the movie. They chose a director who is a storyteller in his own right and who isn't there just to give a version of the book, but to use the book as input for his story. And as a storyteller myself, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know how many times I've seen a film that is exactly the same as a book. I mean, that's hard. Or you decide to, to actually step away from it kind of a bit and we are staying as true to the story we want to tell as possible. Expectations are high. People are waiting to see their version of Harry Hole, but your version won't be my version. My version won't be someone else's version. And all we can do is can be as honest as we can be to character and to the script. There's always a balance of script and book. Me trusting Thomas made it very easy for me to say that you can't do anything to the book. The book is there, now it's your turn. Take these pages that are written, use them as hopefully helpful input for a story that you want to tell, and shoot a good movie. A woman vanished last night. We just found the body. He calls himself the Snowman Killer. He's completely insane. Matthias is a very nice guy, intelligent, reliable. He's almost too perfect to be true. They're the ones you always got to be careful of, I suppose. <laughs> we get to see Matthias from a young age as a boy and what becomes of the boy in terms of the making of a serial killer. There is a very clear path that he follows and one can understand where his troubles come from and his obsessions. I'm thinking that he's going after women that he disapproves of. He is seriously damaged by this childhood trauma. When the car goes through the ice, one part of Matthias's life 
stops there. So one part of Matthias is always going to be 10 or 11 years old when this trauma happened. Although the grown-up Matthias is controlling the, the situation, I think it is the young Matthias who is in charge. I think he needs to be this very, you know, neat and, and perfect about everything else in his life. Because when you have that chaos as one part of yourself, you really need to have a good order of everything else. He's somebody that has their ties perfectly lined out in a perfect tie drawer, and uh, his nails are perfectly sort of manicured. Thomas gave me a very specific idea as to try to make him look as normal as possible with a slight oddity. So I wanted to try and create a character that was meticulous. All his clothing generally has straight edges to it. His ties are very straight, his shirt's collars are very straight. When you look at him, his body shape is very neat, he's very straight up and down. And I wanted to reflect that in his clothing that was slightly odd. Jonas Carlson is uh, our best male actor besides Stellan Skarsgård. He has a method of uh, really moving into the characters, finding the soul of the characters. It's quite amazing what he does in the film. He sort of changes from one side to the other quite seamlessly. And uh, I think this, this scene when he's uh, visiting Raquel in, in uh, the kitchen in the end is a masterpiece. <laughs> Last question. This boy, does his mother deserve to live? The tricky thing here is that the audience shouldn't know, but on the other hand, it can't be just out of the blue. Several scenes we have made in different versions. For instance, uh, I'm taking a, a photo with my, my smartphone on Rebecca's car, and from one perspective, it could look like I'm just texting, but from another perspective, you could really show that I'm taking a photo. You sort of get slight ripples of unease about the character all the way through, but you keep having to check yourself in case it's you who's just responding to the fact that he's not the charismatic, rugged, handsome Michael Fassbender. And it's played very deliberately like that, and I have to say, I think it's a really remarkable performance. I didn't think you'd find me. When you're walking on an ice lake, it really does feel precarious. There's something constantly so strange about being on a frozen lake. At the beginning, a car goes through, and at the end, a man goes through. And we replay the beginning at the end. The opening sequence is a, a, a very complicated jigsaw to put together and involves a lot of people with something that's just a couple of minutes. All those scenes were really, really difficult to shoot because of the amount of snow, of course, but also difficult to bring electricity and everything else in those remote locations. It's really hard work. So the, the car will travel at that speed again now, so at faster speed. We are shooting a part of the opening sequence of the film where a car comes off the road drives through a white field of snow and then spins and stops. Uh, it's a very dramatic scene and it is one of these shots that actually has to be built in post-production. So we're getting lots of elements to build up that shot and then some very clever guys in London put it all back together. 